Hi YouTube and welcome to another edition of Partial Mash Brewing. Tonight we're going to be brewing a oatmeal chocolate cherry stout. Um, we're also going to be tasting a beer that uh, just came up into the keg, just ready to rock and roll, just ready to drink today. And I gotta tell you, it's delicious. It is a Bach. Just kind of get you, let you see that. It's beautiful red coloring. Excuse me. I named it Bach U. You know, you can figure that out from there. Anyway, it's really, really tasty. Uh, you know, it's got a good, good, good malt character and. Plenty of a good a good hop bite. You know, it's it's really good. I really like it. I'm gonna be making it again. And the next time I make it, I'm not gonna alter it. Because I think it's perfect the way it is. Um, that's typically what I do if something um, that I don't like or something that I brew that I like, but maybe there, you know there's something about it that I don't like, I'll change it. But this one here, it's perfect for it's perfect. I'm not gonna mess with it. And it'll come up in a video eventually. It just depends on the next time when I decide to brew it. Anyway, so let's get right into the, the recipe for what I'm calling Bon Bon. Again, a oatmeal chocolate cherry stout. Uh, so right off the bat, we're going to be using three pounds of dark extract, three pounds of Maris Otter, one pound of chocolate malt, one pound of oat malt, one pound of light roasted barley, one pound of Cara Red, one pound of flaked, flaked oats. And I, you know, when I brew stouts, I, I definitely like the oats. I think the oats really bring a nice mouth feel, you know, it, it makes it silky smooth. It's just, it's a, it's a good, it's a good beer. I, I, I think oats in a stout, perfect. That's the way I like it. That's the way I brew them. Um, so as far as the hops go, we're going to do nugget at 60 minutes, challenger at 30, fuggle at five. And then for the yeast, we're using Omega Irish Ale yeast. I'm actually going to be using two packs of yeast because I'm going to be adding the malt extract as a late addition like I did with that IPA um, that I made last time. Uh, and the reason being is because I think, I could be wrong, but I think that the the late malt extract is causing the gravity to be much higher than what I've seen before because it's the only thing I've changed. Um, so because I'm, again, uh, what happened was is that with that IPA I had that 1.07, that real high gravity, but I only had one pack of yeast it took a really long time to take off. The lag time was really long. So I want to try and fix that by throwing two packs of yeast at it. Uh, I don't, I, I, you know, I, I know I could probably make a yeast starter, but I, I'm just not going to do that. I mean, it, it's, it's more work. And to me, I want to keep this fun. I want to keep home brewing fun. And it seems like every time you add a new aspect, you add more work. So, I'm not going to do that. Not to mention the fact every time you, you, you add a new aspect to your brewing, it costs you more money. Uh, I, I don't want to keep, if, if I was going to do a yeast starter, I'm sorry, but I'd go out and buy the flask and, and, and buy the stir plate. That's just the way I am. Because I know I'm not going to want to sit there and you know attend to that yeast and shake it every so often. Nah, screw that. I'm going to wait, save up, and spend the money, buy a magnetic stir plate. Or, you know what, at the same time, I'm gonna try throwing two packs of yeast at this beer if it does hit a high gravity. And there, I don't need it. All right, so real quick. Uh, what you're gonna see in this video is you're gonna see right after I get the, right after I do dough in, and once I've got the mash recirculating, you're, I'll show you, I will come in and show that. Once the boil starts and me adding the hops, um, we'll see that. Uh, and then probably right at flame, and then, well, mom's home. That's why the dogs are going nuts. But anyway, and then after that, after flame up, we'll cool it down, pitch the yeast, and we'll be all done. And again, you know, if you want to see more of my system, check out my first video. But I'm really trying to cut down a whole hour and five minutes. All right, see you later. Okay, so real quick, uh, just thought I'd show you guys this real quick. I like to show this. This is where we're starting out at at on um, the recirc you can see it's, it's pretty dark I don't really know if it's gonna clear up to the point where we can tell a difference but just real quick you can see how dark and murky that is we are brewing a stout 
And again, just real quick, just wanted to show you that. And we'll be back at uh, probably right at the end of the mash. See if there's a difference. Okay. Okay, we're back. Uh, I went ahead and didn't bother with uh, showing you guys the tube and whether or not it cleared up because with brewing a stout, it's so black that. Well, frankly, you couldn't even tell. I mean, here it is. It's time for transfer from, or I'm doing the, the sparge and, well, I mean, that's what's coming out of the mash tun right now. And yeah, it's black. So there's no telling whether or not it cleared up because it's so black. So right now we're transferring from our hot liquor tank into our mash tun and then down the line into our kettle it's a good black wort got a great smell coming off of it just gonna go ahead and pop this up real quick and make sure we've got a good head of water which we do plenty of water above the grain bed so that's gonna run and at the rate it's going it's probably gonna take 20 minutes or so uh, yeah so we'll go ahead and let that do its thing and uh, I will see you guys again at the boil. Alright. Okay we're back. Uh, we've got a nice vigorous rolling boil going and we've made it through the hot break. So we're going to go ahead and add our first edition of hops which is a, a one ounce of nugget. I'm going to go ahead and use a hot bag. I've, I've never actually used a hot bag before. I'm trying just decided I want to try and stay away from yeah I want to try and keep hops out of my fermenter so gonna, gonna see what a hot bag can do. Go ahead and put that through there and we'll see what happens. My, my goal is, is that I can add all three additions to this one bag because you, as you can see it's pretty large. I'm going to go ahead and grab my spoon and push that down in. I don't know, I've never really used hot bags before. I've always worried about the hop utilization being lessened but I'm gonna give it a shot give it a whirl see what happens you know see if I still get the same see if I get the same amount of hops in my beer same same taste same flavor from the hops that I get in my beer as I have before without using them gotta say I'm not you know I don't really get you know I'm not seeing the reaction that I'm used to seeing when I add hops so I don't know maybe it'll be a little delayed or something anyway so that's it I think uh, I don't really have anything else to say I think we'll uh, probably catch up and eh, maybe we'll do a little uh, summary or catch up at the last uh, hop edition with the Werflak tablet Okay, see you then. Okay, we're back real quick for just a real quick interjection, real quick thing. Uh, so, the next, my next three videos, my next three brew videos, I know I've made a big deal about the fact that I'm, I'm the partial masher. Well, for my next three videos, I'm going to be an extract brewer. And the reason being is because Midwest Supplies offered, uh, had up a deal I couldn't pass up. It was three kits, three of their kits for 20 bucks a piece, which for how I, for how I brew, that's basically three brews for the price of one. Because I, because what I, the way I brew, it, it typically cost me about 60 bucks a piece. So for 60 bucks, I got three brews. I couldn't pass it up. Uh, so... Here's what I'm going to put to you guys. You tell me how you want me to brew it. Do I either brew it per their instructions, or I just steep the grains in a muslin bag on the stove for an hour, 
or do I go ahead and use my Herm system? I mean, I don't really think it's going to be that big of a difference, but you let me know. If you want me, want me to do more work, put it in the comments. If it doesn't even matter to you, you don't care, you just want to see a brew video, put that in the comments. Either way, it's up to you guys. And if I don't hear anything, I'll make the decision. Alright, so that's, that's, that's all I had to say. just want to let you guys know that as much as I say I'm the partial masher, my next three videos are going to be extract videos. Alright, we'll see you guys in a, probably about, oh, looks like about 24 minutes when I go to do the last hop edition in the World Flag tablet. Alright, see you later. Okay, we're getting ready to add the extract. Um, yeah, uh, we're going to be adding 3.15 pounds of dark LME at about the 15 minute mark. Go ahead and just kill the burner for a minute. That should kill the boil. And we're going to go ahead and just there we go, this is just a thick, thick, thick syrup stuff. For you extract brewers, you're familiar with this. That bag is obviously causing me trouble. So we'll go ahead and head over here. And just stir, stir, stir while we're adding the extract. So we're not scorching on the bottom of the pan. Yeah, that bag is causing me issue. Alright. I don't think I'm going to bother. Well, I shouldn't say that because I do want to bring this back up to four gallons. Big thing is this bag is just causing me all kinds of grief right now. Just about done. Hopefully that's not just it going right to the bottom of the pot. Wow, wow, that bag is just really causing me fits. Son of a bitch. Ow, ow, okay, that's not cool. Just got splashed hot wart on me. Come on, bag, get over here. Stay out of my way. There we go. Guess I should have just done that to begin with, huh? Well, no, there, there it goes. We're going to hope that's not scorching on the bottom of the pan. Stir, stir, stir. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's... That did not go very well. I'll be real honest. This whole hot bag thing. Alright. Go ahead and add some hot water to this. I feel like an idiot. That did not work out as well as I would have hoped. Shake it up, shake it up, shake it up, shake it up. Try and get all that good, that good wart. Get every last little bit of it. Get a little bit right there. 
Pretty good. All right, so we'll go ahead and throw that in. Go ahead and turn the heat back on. Get that back up to boil. Yeah, and there you go. We'll got one more uh, addition of hops with five minutes left in the boil. And then uh, we'll pitch the yeast, and then we'll cool it down and pitch the yeast. See you then. Okay, so I can't really remember if I said I'd be back at the last hop and Warflak edition, so we're just gonna go ahead and do it. So, Warflak tablet, and it goes at five minutes. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the last hop edition, which is Fuggle, which I think is an awesome hop. So here we go. Go ahead and make sure that the Fuggle will get down in there. Again, you know, this is really the first time I've ever used a hop bag for hop additions. So I'm hoping it works out, but, you know, won't know until we drink it. All right, and we'll see you guys at, uh, well, I'm guessing pitch time. I'm going to say pitch time. No point in, yeah, we'll see you guys at, at, at ease pitch. Okay, so we've cooled down our wort, we've got it in our fermenting bucket, now I'm just going to go ahead and take a quick, a quick reading for gravity, see what we got here. Okay. is actually kind of low. Our original gravity is, uh, wow, yeah that's really kind of low. It's 1.050. That's actually lower than I've had in the past. So, yeah, so then my theory about the uh, adding my theory about adding the uh, extract late is kind of debunked. That's fine. I, you know what? I really don't care. I'm still going to add the two packs of uh, Omega yeast. Actually, no, no, I'm not. Take it back. I'm just going to add one. There's just, there's just no point. So I'll go ahead and add the one. And I'll put the other throw the other way for the next time I brew this beer. Now this pack is hard to open. So we'll go ahead and sanitize my scissors right quick. Done and done. Go ahead and pitch our yeast. So I'm really kind of puzzled by by why that last that that IPA was uh, was so high. All right, so we'll go ahead and throw on our our lid and then add our airlock, and we'll go ahead and put in our fermentation chamber. And that's that. And uh, I'll come back with maybe some closing thoughts. Okay. We're done. Uh, good brew day. Everything went, everything went a whole lot smoother. Didn't make nearly the messes. Uh, 
the only the only issue the only problem is that I that we had or uh, is that uh, the gravity actually was it's just so puzzling uh, was uh, 1.05 um, weird I am not really sure why uh, again this is a beer that I've done before and it's always hit usually 1.06 you know on the money I, I guess I guess I guess taking what I'm gonna take from the IPA that I did in my first video and uh, what I'm gonna take from that plus this is it really adding adding um, extract at the beginning of the boil right after the boil or like I have been 15 minutes left in the boil has no effect on the uh, original gravity I will say that from what I understand your hop utilization is less when you add your extract late but this Malliard reaction, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but this Malliard reaction uh, it is, is significantly less. Your, your caramelization, your color change, you know, your beers aren't going to be as dark, um, you know, if you add extract late. I guess, I guess really from here on out, because I'm not too worried about color. I mean, I mean, really, it's, it's homebrew. I'm not going to worry about color too much. Is that I'm just going to go ahead and... I'm going to go ahead and start adding extract. Go ahead and go back to adding extract earlier. Because it's just it's, it's actually easier. Because it's actually one less step. You know, it's one less time to set... It's one less thing to set a timer for. Because I can just go ahead and add the extract. And then hints, and then add the extract. Then add the first edition of hops. And hit 60 minutes on my timer and be good. I'm I'm fine if the beer ends up a little bit darker. Color's not that big of an issue for me. Um, so yeah, uh, that's pretty much that's pretty much it. I mean, the OG was a little lower than I'd like to see. We'll see what happens. Um, this beer typically ends and ends up. Uh, in the 5-2 range. Now I don't know if the cocoa nibs would have um, changed that. I don't I don't see how. But you never know. Um, anyway, uh, so yeah that's that's it for this beer. We're, we're all done. I'm gonna go ahead and go to bed. It's like midnight. <laughs> so I'm gonna go to bed. But uh, I will leave you with this. Again, um, the next three brews are going to be Pretty much simple extract brews with just some specialty grains. I'm um, going to do those because I got a really good deal on them. You know, can't pass up a good deal on good beer. Anyway, so this is Steel City Fan, aka the Partial Masher, signing off. Until next time, I'm going to go ahead and finish up my, uh, my Bach. And I'm not going to say cheers because this is a German beer. I'm going to say... Prost.